Hi, so I'm with Christina Carabetta, a member of Columbus Citizens Foundation's Young Adult Auxiliary, but a very vibrant member of our community. And um, I'm really looking forward to talking to her about her academic studies, her career path, and what she sees as the challenges today. So Christina, I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing now. Yeah, thank you so much, Lisa, and thanks for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to support CCF. Um, you know, you've, it's really been home for me. Uh, I'm not from New York and, you know, moving to the city, not knowing anyone, I really found comfort um, in becoming a member of CCF. I feel like it's, you know, my home away from home, my family. So um, I'm really thankful for this opportunity and all the opportunities that you've afforded me um, so far. So just a little bit about my background. Um, I'm a lawyer. Um, and I'm also, I have my own firm. I'm a solo practitioner. I practice in Connecticut um, as well as New York City. And I'm licensed in Florida and Massachusetts as well. Um, and I also have a handbag line. It's called Betta Bag. I started about a year and a half ago. Um, and two seemingly random things taken individually. But, you know, once I tell my story, everything sort of comes full circle uh, in a very interesting way. Um, but, you know, really to start, uh, academically, um, I didn't always have an interest in law. Um, I had an interest in fashion, of course, you know, from a young age and just business in general, but I was, you know, never that person from a young age. I said, oh, I want to be a lawyer or I want to be this particular, um, profession. I knew what I didn't want to do. Um, but I, was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, but I knew what my passions were and what my interests were. And that sort of, you know, guided me through school and guided me through my profession. Um, in undergrad, I studied business administration and fashion merchandising, uh, just because it made sense for me at the time. Um, and it gave me the flexibility to figure out what I, exactly I wanted to do in those arenas. Um, and it wasn't really until my probably my senior year, maybe even around graduation time um, that I discovered that you can uh, use a, a law degree or be a lawyer um, in a business sense. You know, it wasn't just you were a litigator or a criminal defense attorney. It wasn't just you were, you know, on an episode of Suits, you know, like I, I always thought. Um, so I, you know, decided, it, you know, probably be in my best interest to get an MBA. I always wanted to do that. But once I learned of different programs that offered a joint JD MBA, um, I figured that would make the most sense for me uh, to excel in a business environment. Um, so that's what I did. And while in law school and in business school, I still uh, held the vision of starting my own business and being involved in fashion in some capacity. I just wasn't exactly sure where I fit into those two arenas. I'm curious with all those interests, did you have any interesting summer jobs or internships while you were in school? Was there anything that helped fuel yeah. those passions? So in undergrad, I interned for Bloomingdale's. That uh, would I did, be a lot of fun, I would think. It, it was so much fun. I had a great time. Uh, I interned in the marketing and public relations area. So I helped coordinate a lot of their uh, in-store events and like different promos and you know the end sort of like my final presentation was um coordinating a fashion show so that when they were, gave me you know really full range to to coordinate everything to put all, all of the outfits um so at the time I was like this is what I want to do I want to be involved in styling and I want to be a stylist um so now but, I've been terrified that something horrible was going to go wrong or I was doing something completely wrong <laughs> So was there any great challenge to putting a fashion show together? I mean, you hadn't had that experience before. So, no, I didn't. But the funny thing was, is so it was an out, it, it was hosted in Bloomingdale's, but the fashion show was for a school and it was, um, I think it was a middle school, right? So the, the models were actually students and we're talking middle school age, maybe even younger. So the parents would come, um, they gave their input on, you know, it was for a charity too. So they were raising money for a charity at the school. So the moms came in, they sort of gave their input on the looks that they wanted. I helped pull the looks, um, but ultimately I was having to dress kids and sort of like organize small children. Right. And 
the the directors of our program are of of Bloomingdale's were, and it was a little not dysfunctional but you know you have kids that sometimes they don't really listen they have a high energy they're just coming from after school they're running around so I was sort of able to not relate to them but I guess work with them uh, in a more flexible way that some of our directors were because they're like our store is in chaos we have all these little kids running around like what do we do I'm like it's okay guys like I can and I I come from a big family anyway I'm the oldest of five so maybe that's why for me it was just easier to <laughs> imitate them um and I that's where I excelled I was like all right, I I can deal with the kids that's that's not an issue well it's good to know you can juggle chaos yeah. Um, so I, I'm going to fast forward a bit and say that when we first met, we were seated together at a dinner and I looked over at the bag that was, um, on your chair and you had just told me that you're a lawyer and I complimented you on the bag and commented how hard it is to find a good bag because they're uh, oftentimes too big or they're too heavy, even when they're empty, they don't have pockets in the right places. And, you know, you, I didn't, I, I had no idea that you had designed the bag. I just saw this nice bag and you told me the story of how you came up with the idea. So I think people would love to hear a little bit about how, you know, you go from uh, lawyer to entrepreneur. Um, and I know that wasn't an easy path, but, um, you know, as a owner of one of the bags, I can say it's a brilliant design <laughs> and I, I love my bag. So I, I really, I do appreciate that. Um, but it's funny, really, the the struggle that you shared was the same struggle that I had, right? So um, being in school, it wasn't something that I always thought about, right? Because you have backpacks, you don't really need any other way to carry your things. But after you graduate and you're in a professional setting, and if I'm dressed going to court, I'm, I don't want to carry a backpack around, right? It doesn't really scream professional or sophisticated. Uh, so when I was looking for a bag that fit all of my professional and personal items, I really struggled to find one. And when I was talking to other women, um, in, you know, in various industries, they shared the same thing. They either, you know, have multiple bags that they carry around, some carry things. And it's, it was just very cumbersome. No one had a one answer like, oh, yes, this is the brand I like. This is my go to. Um, there were some, you know, professional brags that were very high price point. So if you could, you know, afford it, it wasn't something that you wanted to use all the time and, you know, really sort of beat up in a sense, you know, where you're constantly using it, you're taking on the train, you're commuting, you're putting things in and out of it. It was just more of like a, a nice item that you take out on special occasion. And I was like, well, that's no use to me because I really need something durable, but also that looked nice. Um, so I shared this, this sentiment with my uncle, um, and I was like, you know, I really, I have this idea for a bag, you know, I want it to open this way and I need the pockets here. I just don't know how to create it. You know, I went to business school, I studied fashion merchandising, but in merchandising school, they don't teach you how to sew. So I didn't know how to make something on my own. Um, but he did. So my uncle, you know, growing up through my childhood was incarcerated and he learned how to leather tool while he was in prison. And before that, he knew, like, he learned how to sew through his mother, which is my nana. She was a seamstress. Uh, she immigrated here from Italy, was a seamstress in Italy, and then was a seamstress here. So she passed on that trait to her children. Um, and so he learned how to sew, and he really was able to fine-tune that skill and learn how to leather tool while he was incarcerated. Um, and during that time, he would send all types of leather goods home for us, whether it was for holidays or birthdays, anything that he made, he would send. And they were these beautiful, unique pieces that you really weren't able to find anywhere else. Uh, and then when he got home from prison, you know, he didn't really have the opportunity to create things anymore because he just didn't know how to do it. He had a sewing machine, uh, you know, that was in my nana's basement, but he didn't really have the means to get the leather or the equipment or really have the knowledge of how to turn this passion into something that was more like a business. Um, so he would always say to me, you know, if you have an idea for something, I'd be glad to make something. If you need something of leather, even if you need something fixed, like I don't want to lose this skill. And at the time I was still figuring out like what I was doing with my life. I was still in college. I'm like, well, I don't know. You know, I have no idea how to make the business, but you know, if you want to make a bag together, we can do that. So that was always something in my mind. Um, and then once I really had the idea for this professional bag, I explained it to him and he was like, yeah, I mean, if you could draw it out and sketch it, we can make a prototype. And that's exactly what we did. 
Well, it's, it's a great story. And it's also a great story because it pulls together a lot of themes, I think, you know, um, you know, it brings together the idea of family, but also a second chance for your uncle. I mean, a lot of people who are formerly incarcerated don't have ways to channel their energy and talents positively. A lot of doors are closed. So, you know, this is an opportunity for him as well as for you. And it's, uh, I know it's a story you told um, in a short video we did for uh, the Columbus Day Parade a couple of years ago. But, you know, I think it's it's important to remind people that opportunities find their way um, into a lot of things in our lives and being open to trying new things is important. Um, I'm curious because I know you're also involved in uh, some family businesses, um, which can be a very complicated dynamic. Um, and I wonder, you know, how do you balance, um, you know, those issues where sometimes you have to treat family members like business partners, not like siblings or parents or people you love and you have to get them to focus or they have to get you to focus. Yes. Well, that's my family's in Connecticut and I live in New York city. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. Um, no, but it's, I'm actually in Connecticut right now. Uh, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. And, you know, for me, I think it just really came natural because that's what I grew up in. It's a, a business that my grandfather started. Um, my dad, my aunts and uncles all work for the business. Um, I started working for the business when, you know, I was just in school going to work with my dad, even, you know, as a little kid uh, and then just going, growing up through high school, I was working in, you know, the various different departments of the business, um, which was great. But for me still, I realized I wanted to do something more and, and different. Um, and at the time I didn't think like being a lawyer, I can help the business, the company in any way, but turns out I actually, I can, right. So um, I help a lot with uh, their legal needs, uh, business development. So we're able to work that way. Um, and just with the position that I have, um, I don't have to go in every single day. You know, I, I'm able to do things remote and and be flexible. And I think, um, you know, they really, you know, value my opinion, my expertise, and I value theirs. You know, there's a lot of things about the industry that I don't know that they do know. Um, so it's a good, it's a good working relationship. Great. Well, we don't want to take too much of your time, but, you know, one of the reasons we do these career chats is to try and offer our high school and college students, you know, some inspiration, but also some sense that um, you don't necessarily know exactly how life is going to unfold and um, what you excel at in school hopefully finds its way into your professional life, but um, that's not necessarily always the case. Um, and I think, you know, if if, since you come from a large family and um, you probably undoubtedly have sought advice from family members and given it to others, you know, if there were high school or college students asking you for advice today, what's what's one of the things that would come to mind to tell them? Oh, that's that's a good one. I think I mean, it's I don't want to sound cliche, really, but honestly, for me, it's just be true to like who you are and figure out what you're passionate about. Um, and it's okay if you don't have all the answers, right? Like that, that was a real struggle for me, especially starting really both businesses, my law firm and my hand, handbag line, um, both at a relatively young age, especially for law, because a lot of my colleagues, you know, are in the industry 30, 40 years working at big firms. Um, so it was from what I've been told a very bold move of me to start my own firm. And <laughs> it's not that I, you know, it's not that I thought I knew everything, right. I didn't have all the answers. I just knew what I wanted to do. Um, and not having all the answers can seem scary because you're like, okay, I don't know what this is going to look like and what this is going to look like. And can, it could really be intimidating. Um, but my advice would be just start and, the more you work at something, uh, the more you grow and the more you learn and the more confidence you build within yourself. Um, if you don't try, you're never, you're never really going to know. And for me, I, I learn more by doing, um, and that's how I gain really confidence in myself and just having a great resource of people around you, different mentors in different areas where you can feel comfortable calling, um, and asking for advice and knowing that, they'll give it to you without judgment or without, you know, being scared, like, oh, am I going to look silly at answering this question? Cause I don't know a certain thing. Um, and I actually found a lot of support within the Italian American community 
with CCF um, and also different organizations. So like in the legal arena, it's the National Italian American Bar Association. I became acquainted with um, as a law student. And there I just felt really comfortable with the people. Um, it felt more like a family sense. So I, you know, felt comfortable asking them questions um, that I wouldn't normally ask, you know, a, a veteran attorney just because I didn't want to look silly or, you know, mm -hmm. ask, ask a dumb question. Well, yeah, having having various kinds of safety nets is really important. And I think you've given us a fantastic sentiment for ending on that, you know, you have to overcome your fears a little bit, but you also have to find that community that will support you. And I, I think it's very true that uh, here at CCF and um, with the Italian American Bar Association and many other groups, I think that's in fact that surrogate family feeling that is common to a lot of these groups that in a large group of lawyers, you might be afraid to ask a question, but somehow in a group that's come together to be supportive, you, you feel more open to risking that question. But um, it dawns on me that we'll have to have you back for a second uh, career chat at some point, because I think we'd love to talk to you about how you source your materials. And in today's world with people being concerned about the ethics of how materials are sourced and what that all means. So I think we've got, you know, Christina. Oh, yeah. at a, a, part two a whole nother arena. <laughs> but thanks so much for your time. Yeah, um, thank you.